when Anushka Sharma makes a film and when people like uh, important directors, Anurag Kashyap, start praising the film, your expectations go up and if anything, like the ghost, it disappears during the run of the latest film from them, Bulbul, them meaning Anushka and her brother. I'm surprised that uh, Anurag Kashyap uh, went on record to be praising the film as much as he did because I thought it was an extremely ordinary film and it was very theatric, it was very contrived and the cast was a screaming no, no. All the praise that uh, Tripti Bimtri gets for her role the central character of Bulbul, I suspect, is orchestra or is suspect in its honesty quotient. It's about the film spans from uh, sometime when uh, in, in 1981, uh, in uh, 1918, uh, in the presidency town of Kolkata, there's a child marriage. There's this little girl. Uh, you have Ruchi Mahajar playing Bulbul as the child artist and then when she becomes uh, the adult, it is Tripti Dumri. Uh, she runs into this young boy Satya, who as a childhood uh, artist, you have Varun Para Buddhadev and as the adult, you have Avinash Tiwari. For the beginning, you begin, begin to believe that it's a child marriage between uh, Satya and Bulbul, but it's not to be. It's a marriage between Satya's elder brother, uh, Indranil, who has a lookalike brother in Mahendra, who has a mental problem, or that's how he's projected. We really don't know what he is. He only comes for a couple of scenes to show that he's mentally instable. And uh, he is married. That is, uh, Mahendra is married to Binodini, Paulidam. And uh, Palidam obviously is married to the insane of the lookalike brothers and is eyeing uh, the saner brother, that is uh, Indranil, who is now in child marriage. She, he has married this little girl, Bulbul. As the story develops, uh, there is a relationship or a, a cord between uh, Satya and Bulbul. And I suspect that while Bulbul loves him, Satya just has a warm regard for Bulbul. The story moves on. I'm not going to tell you the nuances of the story. That's not uh, anybody's job. I think that's the job of the director. And however bad uh, the filmmaker may have made the story, I'm not going to pay up for that and tell you that it's not worth seeing. It is not bad a movie to be seen. It, uh, I really don't think it's something that you should stay away from. But no, nothing very uh, definite to talk home about. But I have uh, quite a few things to talk against the film. One of it is the performance from Tripti Dimri. I think it's very, very, very labored and contrived. She's trying hard to be Vidya Balan. I don't think, uh, I don't see any reason why she should. I don't think, uh, you can make out that she's emotively capable so she could have been herself, which is not to be. And uh, it looks like everybody's emotion, including that of Binodini played by Paulida, is pumped and it doesn't flow naturally into the character. In his central character as Satya, uh, somehow Avinash Tiwari reminds me more of Vishwajit. In fact, the film itself reminds you of those uh, ghost movies that Vishwajit did in the 60s and the 70s. In fact, uh, Further down in time, uh, the film is nowhere near Aparna Sen's Goenar Baksho, a film that Aparna Sen had made with her daughter Konkona Sen and with Maushimi Chatterjee about ghosts in a Bengal family. The feudal picture there is beautifully narrated. Here it is not narrated. I think there are some strong, needless verticals drawn. Uh, again, the director labors to bring in a kind of a negative character 
or a character that is uh, so much in angst, uh, Tripti Dimri, and you really don't know which boat she wants to uh, paddle, as a consequence of which I think she turns out to being not a real human character, but somebody who's fleshed in and fleshed out from here and there. And I'm also very disappointed with the performance of Avinash Tiwari. He has no emotions worth his while on his face. He's dumb. He looks more dim-witted than uh, the brother who is supposed to be mentally challenging, challenged, that's uh, Rahul Bose. Now, Rahul Bose, such a professional actor, he does his work, he does it very professionally, but he has so little to do in the film. But uh, there's one important uh, aspect with which I'd like to, uh, a uh, uh, thought I would like to leave with many of you viewers. And this is about the rape scene in the film. Uh, I was also watching the other film where uh, the other day, uh, in this gang war story of uh, Sushmita Sen, we had a scene where uh, Jayant Kriplani is indulging in sex. And today in this film, we have a rape scene uh, in the bedroom of uh, Bulbul with the insane uh, character Mahindra playing, played by Rahul Bose. I think it's very graphic. Uh, I don't know whether it's the kind of thing you sit in a drawing room and watch. Don't forget this is on an OTT platform, not in a big theater, not on screen. Uh, you could be sitting and, uh, you know, there is free access to this film by all and sundry so all this talk, now whether it should be or should not be is one call. Should it be or should it not be when the context wants it is another. And is this that context where it is required is another. But most importantly, those who talk against censorship and talk about self-imposed censorship, this is a huge challenge. Coming from a very uh, mainstream production house, uh, I would have thought filmmakers like Anushka Sharma would have thought more seriously about it than have placed it in the run of the mill. Uh, I certainly believe that this is an issue that requires attention. And the film ends with uh, a scene that's very reminiscent of Guru Dutt's uh, Sahib Bibi or Ghulam. It's a beginning scene. And I believe the early scene that uh, Guru Dutt emphatically but so poetically throws up at you in the opening scenes of Sahib Bibi or Gulam is miles ahead of the attempted theatric contrived scene in Bulbul. In short, it's a very short film and uh, time is not a huge uh, challenge in these days. So I think that could be good enough reason to watch the movie. But one, uh, I'd conclude by saying that uh, Anushka, please forget the Paris and the uh, Pulharis. Go back on NH10. That's your place. Bye-bye.